Hello everyone and welcome to our fourth nine weeks review. Just a reminder that these are going to be the formulas that are given on your fourth nine weeks test. This test contains information on circles, area, surface area, volume, and stats. And so make sure you're aware of the date that you're taking your nine weeks test. Just as a general reminder, this will count as a fourth test score for everyone, but it has the ability to drop and replace your lowest test score from the nine weeks if it is higher. Um, so it does say the formulas are given, but you are responsible for knowing what each variable stands for and how to find it. We are supplying the formulas, but you need to know how to apply them and when. So you need to know what each variable represents and when to use each formula. So we've got our area formulas, our surface area volume formulas, we've got the, and then our circle formulas, and then of course Euler's formula. So at the very beginning, I went ahead and filled in the formula since those will be given. Um, and then we have some information on identifying different things in a diagram. I've gone ahead and written that out just to save some time. And I'm just going to hit the high points and highlight each of these things in the picture. So what is a secant line? A secant line is going to be a line that touches the circle two times. So A to E goes through at point A and point E and touches the circle twice. So that is a secant line. What is a tangent line? Well, remember that a tangent line touches a circle one time. So it's a line, so it has the arrows at the end. And it's going to be, it's touching the circle one time. So that touches the circle at point E, so that is a tangent line. Remember that that is going to be um, perpendicular to the radius. So we can add right angles there if we wanted to. But right now we're just naming what each thing is. C to B to E, that is going to be a major arc because number one, it has three letters and a semicircle or a major arc are gonna have three letters. So how do I know which direction to go? I'm gonna go from C through B to E. So it has to hit B before it hits E. That's a major arc because it is more than 180 degrees. It's like a piece of the crust of the pizza. All right, what is a central angle? A central angle comes out of the center. It has its vertices. Um, its vertex is the center and it's got its other points are on the circle. So um, angle ADB is gonna be a central angle because it goes to the center, comes out of the center. All right, what else we have? We have oh, a minor arc. How do I know that that's minor from the beginning? Because it has two letters. And so how do I know which direction to go? Here, all the way to here for BC, or from here to here? Well, minor measures less than 180 degrees, so I know that it's gonna be the shortest distance on the arc from B to C. So I'm gonna go from B to C, that measures less than 180. So I know that's the direction I go, because it's only two letters. All right, y'all are rocking what a radius is. Y'all know what a radius is. C to D has a point on the circle and it goes to the center. So that's a radius. All right, what is a chord? A chord has a starting point and a stopping point on the circle. So it's going to be a segment that starts and stops on the circle. So A starts in the circle, E is on the circle. That is a chord. All right, let's look at a diameter. We know that a diameter is a type of chord that goes through the center. So the diameter would be A to C. Um, some people might ask, well, Ms. Hall, isn't that also a secant line? The line that goes through it is a secant. The chord that exists from A to C is a diameter. So that's just more specific. All right, what is a semicircle? A semicircle is going to be named with three letters, and it is going to create half of the circle. So A to B to C starts at A, goes through B, stops at C. That creates exactly half of a circle. So 360 divided by 2 gives me 180 degrees for a semicircle. And then what is an inscribed angle? An inscribed angle is going to be um, an angle that has every single point is on the circle. So it doesn't go to the center, it reaches across the circle. So A to E to B, A, E, and B, that angle is going to be, um, E is the vertex is on the circle. And so that angle is going to always be, if you remember, it's half of the intercepted arc. Whereas a central angle matches the arc, this is what we call the slingshot. So that's just a review of some of the vocabulary that's going to pop up in these next few problems. And I'm just going to do page one and then I'll start a new video. So this is chapter 10, page one. So let's go ahead and do some of the problems. Solve for the indicated value. So the first thing I want you to notice is that every single one of these points is coming out of the center. So these are going to be central angles. Okay, so let's make a note of that. These are central angles. And the central angle is always going to be equal to the arc measure. So even though 55 degrees is written on this angle right here, 55 degrees would also be from E to D. So remember that those are congruent in a central angle. So we want to know what is C to B. And so C to B, it says measure of C to B, that arc from here to here. We know that that is going to be part of um, that 90 degree angle. 
right here, but we need to find the other missing pieces. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to fill in all of this shape. And so the first thing I notice is that I have a diameter right here. And if that's a diameter, then that means that this yellow plus this blue should have a sum of 180 degrees. And so if I add those up to 180, that makes this 125 degrees, this piece right here. Um, if I have 90 degrees on this side, I also have 90 degrees on this side because those are supplementary from that diameter. And then I can find my missing pieces because if this is 55, vertical angles makes this 55. And so what is my missing pink piece? My missing pink piece is going to be 90 minus 55, which of course is gonna give me 35 degrees. And so now I know each individual piece, which would allow me to find the arc measures and angle measures of the rest of these. So what it says to find arc CB is going to be 35 degrees because the arc measure is going to be equal to that central angle, 35. What is arc C to D? That's going to be 90 degrees because that's also 90 from C to D. Okay. All right, and then what is C to A to E? So starting at C, going through A first and then stopping at E. Well, what numbers am I going to add together? I'm going to add together 35 plus 55 plus 125. And when I do that, I get 215 degrees. It makes sense because that's um, a major arc and it measures more than 180. All right, now number 12 is not central angles. These angles that are created are not central. They are inscribed angles. So just remember the difference between what we just talked about. And so these are what we call the slingshot problem. So if I want to find X, X is going to be half of this intercepted arc from A to B. And so I need to find that arc. Well, the first thing I notice is that B to D is a diameter again. And so if that's a diameter, then that means that together 84 and AB add up to 180. So what is 180 minus 84? That is going to give me 96 degrees. So X is going to be 96 divided by 2. What is half of 96? That is going to give me 48 degrees. So this is a 48 degree angle, it's half. All right, then I wanna find Y. Well, what does Y open up to? Y opens up to an 84 degrees intercepted arc. And so our Y is going to be half of 84. So 84 divided by two. If it were a central angle, it'd be exactly equal to 84, but this is an inscribed angle, so I divide by two. That is going to give me 42 degrees. And then they wanna know what is the measure of, so let's switch colors, what is the measure of B to A to C. So it's three letters, so it should either be equal to 180 or more than 180. B to A to C. What numbers am I adding together? I'm going to be adding together 96 and 84 and 84, it looks like. What is 96 plus 84 plus 84? That is going to give me a total of 264 degrees for that major arc. So question 11 was talking about central angles. Question 12 was looking at the um, inscribed angles. All right, so we, on this next one, we really do need directions that say assume that those um, lines that appear to be tangent are tangent. So I'm going to go ahead and make a note here. These are going to be tangent lines. I'm going to go ahead and tell you that from the beginning, and I would tell you that in the directions. If these lines are tangent, how do I solve for x? Well, these th that appear to be tangent, um, if this is a tangent line, let's go ahead and highlight it. If this is a tangent line, it makes a right angle with the radius that's drawn in. If this is also a tangent line, then it makes a 90 degree angle with this radius. And so this creates a quadrilateral. So those add up to 360. So you could do 360 minus 90 minus 140 minus 90. But we also know that those are going to be supplementary. Those two angles are gonna be supplementary. So 140 plus X should add up to 180 degrees. We learned that um, the opposite angles, so 140 and X, in a, um, whenever we have these tangent lines, we have this quadrilateral, are supplementary. So what does that give me for X? That gives me 40 degrees. But you would get the same thing if you did 360 minus 90 minus 90 minus 140 and use that quadrilateral since it has four sides. All right, which line appears to be tangent in number 14? Um, it appears to be this line. We know that it's not the other one because that touches the circle twice. And so since this line appears to be tangent, it's going to be, I'm telling you on these next few problems that those are tangent lines. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and make a note of that, those are tangent lines, tangent line in yellow. Um, so I get to add that 90 degree angle. Well, what gets created here? We have a triangle. And so what do we know that these three angles should add up to in a triangle? We know that those three angles should add up to 180. So X plus 90 plus 51 should add up to 180 degrees. And so when I do the math on that, I'm gonna get 39 degrees for X. 
All right, number 15. Um, number 15, what we have is we have a, um, the six is crossing the X at a 90 degree angle. And what that means is that it's cutting it in half. So I wanna find, I have a right triangle here because I get to copy the 90 on the other side. And I wanna find Y first. And then X is going to end up being equal to Y times two. So X is gonna be equal to two Y because we wanna find X ultimately. So I'm gonna use Pythagorean theorem. I'm gonna say Y squared plus six squared equals nine squared. Of course, I'm gonna type it in my calculator just to do this quickly. Nine squared minus six squared. That's going to give me um, Y equals the square root of 45. And so if Y is equal to the square root of 45, X is going to be equal to the square root of 45 times 2. So I'm going to type that in, square root of 45 times 2. And when I round that at the very, very end, X is going to be approximately 13.4. It does say round to the nearest tenth. So it's going to be about 13.4. All right. Now, the next problem, we have an inscribed angle. How do I know that it's inscribed? Because it's not going to the center like a central angle would. Its vertex is on the circle. And so what do we know about the relationship between the arc that gets intercepted and the angle that is here? We know that this angle is going to be exactly half of that arc. And so what we can do is we can take that 17 and to get A, we're gonna do 17 times two. We get to double that. And so that is going to be equal to 34 degrees. That arc is going to be equal to 34 degrees. That's an inscribed angle. All right, we have another inscribed angle on this next picture. On this picture, we have, we're looking for the inscribed angle is A, and the intercepted arc is 136. So how do I find that angle at angle A? What we're gonna do is we're gonna take 136 and we're gonna divide it by two. And when we do 136 divided by two, we're gonna get 68 degrees. All right, on our next problem, we have another inscribed angle. So let's color code that first. Here's my inscribed angle. And then there's my intercepted arc. Sadly, we don't know A and we don't know B, but we can find A because I know that together A, 100, and 136 make a full circle, and so that those should add up to 360. So how do I find A? I'm going to subtract 100 and 136 from um, 360, and that is going to give me 124 degrees for A. So A is equal to 124. What does that help me find B? because B is going to be equal to 124 divided by two. And so 124 divided by two is gonna give me 62 degrees. All right, the next set of directions say solve for the circumference and the area and leave in terms of pi, meaning your answer should have a pi in it. So let's go ahead and copy down our formulas. Circumference equals two pi r, area equals pi r squared. Um, we say twinkle, twinkle, little star, circumference equals two pi r. And then we say fuzzy, wuzzy, was a bear, area equals pi r squared for a circle. And so for both of these things, we need the radius. And so right now I am given a diameter. So what is my radius going to be? My radius is going to be equal to 7.5 centimeters. I'm gonna go ahead and cross out the 15 so that I don't accidentally use that. And so circumference is gonna be equal to two times pi times 7.5. And then the area is gonna be equal to pi times 7.5 squared. And of course, to leave it in terms of pi, that just means you type in everything except the pi symbol and you leave that in your answer. So. This is going to give me two times 7.5 gives me 15 pi centimeters for the circumference. Well, what is 7.5 squared going to be? That is going to give me 56.25 pi centimeters squared. It wants it exactly in terms of pi, so we're gonna leave this as the exact answer. Area is always centimeters squared, circumference is always just centimeters or units. All right, now they give me another one of those problems, but this time they do give me the radius. So circumference is going to be equal to 2 times pi times 5.8 inches. Area is going to be equal to pi r squared, so pi times 5.8 squared. And so when you type that in, you're going to get 11.6 pi inches for the circumference, and then 33.6 pi inches squared for the area. All right. Um, now we want to find, instead of finding the total area and the total circumference, we want to find for the arc length and the sector area of the shader, shaded portion. So here's what that means. Arc length is going to be a piece of the crust, and then sector area is going to be the, air, the um, shaded section. Leave in terms of pi. So here's my arc length. Let's go ahead and color code it. 45 degrees is my arc length. The shaded area is going to be in blue. Um, shaded area is going to be in blue in this one. And then the arc length I'm trying to find is the pink part. So two different things on this problem. 
It's kind of hard to tell in this picture. It's not the best. I'm so sorry. Um, I'll make it very, very clear on the test. But here's the shaded section. The shaded portion um, is in blue and the arc length is in um, sector is in blue and then arc length is in pink. All right, so let's go ahead and do this on number 18. On number 18, to find the arc length, we have a formula um, for arc length, and it's x out of 360 times 2 pi r. And so to find the arc length, arc length, let's go ahead and write down our formula on the first one. We won't write it on all of them. It's going to be x out of 360 times a, piece, a portion of the circumference, which is what we're doing. A portion of the circumference is going to be x out of 360 times 2 pi r, where the sector area is going to be a portion of the area, so it's going to be x out of 360 times pi r squared. So that x represents the angle of the um, arc or sector that we're working with. And so for arc length, that's going to be 45 degrees out of 360 times 2 times pi times 10. And again, we're leaving these in terms of pi, so we're going to type in everything except for um, the pi symbol. And so when we do that in our calculator, we type in the numerator first. So 45 times 2 times 10, that is going to be 900. And then we do that over 360. That is going to give me 2.5 pi um, inches for the arc length. And then whenever I do that for the, there we go. Oh, goodness, I need to actually write this one out. That's going to be 45 degrees out of 360 times pi r squared, which is pi 10 squared. Again, we type in everything except the pi symbol. And so that's going to be 45 times 10 squared, which gives me 4,500. I divide that by 360, and that's going to give me 12.5. I could also, if I wanted to, make these 12.5 pi inches squared for sector area. Um, I could also make these um, fractions. And so as a fraction, um, the sector area would be 25 over 2 pi inches squared. And then the 2.5 would be 5 over 2 pi inches. And so if you do those as fractions, that's totally fine as well. All right, let's look at number 19. Let's first find the arc length. And so the first thing I notice is that I don't have the angle that I need. I need the rest of this angle. So what is 360 minus 60? That's going to give me 300 degrees for the angle I need. It's going to be 300 over 360 times 2 times pi times 6 is my radius. So I'm going to do 300 times 2 times 6 divided by 360. That's going to give me 10 pi feet. And then what is my sector area going to be? Sector area is going to be equal to 300 over 360 again. This is the portion of the circle I'm working with times pi times 6 squared. So 300 times 6 squared divided by 360 is going to give me 30 pi feet squared for my sector area because area is always in units squared. All right, so now we know that this is also 120 because this, it's a central angle, and then my radius is going to be equal to 7.5 feet. So I'm going to cross out the 15 so I don't accidentally work with that. My arc length is going to be equal to 120 out of 360 times 2 pi r, 2 pi times 7.5. So I'm going to do 120 times 2 times 7.5 divided by 360. It's going to give me 5 pi feet for my arc length. And then, of course, I want to find my sector area as well. And so what is going to be my sector area? It's going to be 120 out of 360 times pi r squared. So pi times 7.5 squared. 120 times 7.5 squared is equal to 6,750, and I divide that by 360. That gives me 18.75 pi, exactly. 18.7 pi, 18.75 pi um, feet squared of area. And that's in terms of pi. You could also, if you wanted to, change that to a fraction, which would be 75 over 4 pi feet squared. Um, that if we know to how to convert decimals to fractions and fractions to decimals on our, fra our, on our calculator, so that way it doesn't matter how a test presents it, you'd be able to convert back and forth. All right, so this last piece of page one of this chapter, it says identify the center and the radius of each circle. So just, just remember that our formula is going to be given, but x minus h squared plus y minus k squared. We expected y'all to know equals r squared. We expected y'all to know that for the test, we are supplying it on the nine weeks test. And so to find my center, what I want to do is I want to take um, 
it's x minus h and then y minus k. And so I want to take the opposite of both of these signs. So that is going to give me a center of negative four comma positive three for my center. And then my radius is gonna be equal to the square root of 25. So the reason I do that is because r squared is equal to 25. And so what is r gonna be? r is gonna be equal to the square root of 25. What is the square root of 25? It is five. So the equation of this circle um, the address is x plus 4 squared plus y minus 3 squared equals 25. That's the equation. And this is the circle who is centered at the point negative 4, 3, and the radius is equal to 5. So it's kind of like saying, like, this is its street number, um, and this is its um, house number. Street address and then house number. Okay, so what about this um, question? Well, this question, it's going to be x minus h squared, but there's nothing written next to the x. So we know what that means is that it must be 0. And so that's going to be the point 0, positive 2. r squared equals 9. So r is going to be equal to the square root of 9. What is the square root of 9? The square root of 9 is 3. So again, we're flipping those signs. We're flipping the, there's nothing there, so it's going to be 0. And then opposite of negative 2 is positive 2. Because we have that um, negative symbol in our formula, that switches the sign of the h and the k. So that is page 1 of your chapter 10, 4th and week's review. And I will do a new video for the next page.